my name is Tyler Fork and I lead the um, OrkNow product team here at Service Titan. So working closely with customers or customers that are thinking about, you know, Fleet Pro, um, kind of identifying needs and then ultimately working on what we build and why and kind of how things work. And like I said earlier, you know, we're, we're, we're starting these sessions to be, um, uh, you know, just as not as a sales pitch, we're, we're, we're having these sessions for, for existing customers, folks that are thinking about uh, Fleet Pro. We're just kind of generally, a, you know, generally curious about fleet management um, itself. And so we're excited. This is the first one. We're going to kick it off. And so, um, but before we kind of dive into product stuff, super curious about you and where, where you're at um, and kind of your role um, at, at your business. Yeah, so... Um, I'm an office admin here at our business. We have 10 guys formerly out on the field. Um, to a couple different vans. Um, yeah, not super big. Um, but yeah, having using service saving for about uh, since uh, late October last year. So coming up in a year. Got it. Got it. Awesome. Are you um are you using any sort of Fleet tools today, or are you, are you using like the the tablet tracking, or how does how does that work? Um, how does that work for you guys? Yeah, um, not we yeah, not using any fleet tools. Um, I mean, I have like an Excel document that I use to track different stuff, but that's about as far as it gets. Got it. Got it. Understood. All all good. Um, well, I I think you know since. Um, I think let, let's kick this thing off and just kind of give, a, I'll give an overview of, of Fleet Pro. Have you, I'm curious, um, have you have you seen it at all or seen it anywhere or had a demo of it or um, what, what do you know about it? If, no, if I haven't actually, no. I was, sorry, see um, it again? Yeah, not much. I mean, I've, I've heard of it, but I don't really know anything. Okay, cool. Well, let's, um, I'll kind of go through th go through things quick and you know, like I said, you know, Logan, my, my, my style is super casual. Like if you have thoughts or questions, just please, mm -hmm. Please interrupt me, and we'll we'll cover everything. Okay, um, cool. So, okay, you can see my map, right? Yes. Yep. Okay, so let's let's just briefly start on on what Fleet Pro is and and kind of what, what we're doing. You know, we we started this journey roughly two and a half years ago, and Fleet we've had Fleet Pro available for a, a little over a year now, and uh, you know we've we, we started this journey because one um, we we. we we wanted to build a product and something that was truly integrated with with core service Titan. You know, we we realize and know that our customers spend you know 70, 80 plus percent of their day within core service Titan just managing their business from calls and scheduling to dispatching to you know um, um, invoicing to everything that happens in the field. And so we wanted to try and build something and are building something that is. Um, really unique with, compared to other fleet tools that exist in the marketplace. Um, we, we, we heard consistently that contractors are, are spending um, a lot of their time using you know, these third-party fleet management systems, which serve their purpose and they, they're, they're, they're good systems, but it's an external system. You, it's a completely different login. You have to manage your users in those systems. You have to manage you know, office administrators and there's a lot of hiking that goes along with uh, with managing that separate system and so um, we wanted to build something that was absolutely unique to uh, to the market and something that was truly built for contractors and so um, this is as we just kind of talk about fleet pro itself um, this is really the main this is the main landing page for fleet and initially this is um, this is a demo and test account that we have and you know when you when you think about generally fleet management and managing a fleet there's a couple critical pieces and the first one is is managing and storing specific information about the technicians potentially or even about the actual fleet itself mm -hmm. and so one of the one of the core areas is is our vehicle data section where it's something that isn't really touched you know every single day but it is a critical piece into knowing like what vehicles exist within my company? What's the year, make, and model? What is the existing odometer readings for those vehicles? What is the you know smaller things like storing information for you know more maybe um, uh, compliance reasons like the license plate or other expiration dates? 
And so we've got this section more to be able to see holistically everything that exists within the fleet and the business, and also being able to know which technicians or, or you know, office personnel, et cetera, are actually tied into those individual vehicles itself. So um, again, it's not something that people are, are, are you know, adjusting or tweaking every single day generally, but it is a section certainly that uh, people used more of like, uh, you know, keeping records in one single, uh, in one single spot, in one single location. Yeah. Um, uh, and sense. yeah, and, you know, the other, the, the other section that we have is, <clears throat> is our, is generally our, our, our driver data section. Um, our driver data section purely as well is, is driven to help store information for, you know, driver's license expiration dates or other types of certification um, expiration dates, potentially, whether that's something, uh, you know, electrical or, or, or plumbing certification for an individual technician. So we really try and store that uh, information in one single spot. You're able to track and see uh, something that happens more than it should, which is like someone's driver's license go and expired. Um, you're able to see that in one single spot instead of like in my past life, where I used to have a fleet, I had a filing cabinet next to me where I had to track these things on a monthly basis. So smaller, smaller benefit, but generally, again, it's more aggregated. Everything's in one spot. I don't have to add technicians in the separate fleet management tool. It all comes from my technicians that are already in service Titan. So I don't have to go through that manual process time and time again. So um, yeah, cool. more, more, more admin related generally, but that's, you know, kind of where we sit. Um, you know, when, and the, the other interesting part is we're, you know, kind of talking about less administrative type, um, things that have to be tracked or done. You can certainly do that within fleet pro talking about more of like the, um, more consistent features and value that our, our customers actually, you know, typically purchase, um, fleet management or, or fleet pro for is one is, um, is reporting. So, you know, one of the, one of the common questions that we get uh, with with Fleet Pro is I see that you have you know more like hand reports and you have like this event report like what what is the actual difference and you know Logan we tried we tried building Fleet Pro in generally more of a flexible manner where Fleet Pro is or our excuse me our event report is more like ad hoc type reporting that you want to grab a specific piece of information on a specific date range for a specific vehicle. And so within our event report, you can, you can grab up to like 25 different pieces of information and data about driver performance, technician performance, uh, vehicle performance, and really try and narrow it down on whatever you may be looking at. So for example, nice. you know, a lot of our, a lot of our um, existing customers may use this for tracking like you know, driver infractions, like, hey, I want to see how many times Logan sped during the month of July. I can select my technician, I select the speeding event, and it'll quickly, you'll see all of those events by date, by address, by time, and be able to dial in, like, who may be uh, technicians that you may want to watch out for more than others. And there's other cases where, you know, there's um, investigations happening because a GPS device may have been unplugged by a technician. So being able to track and see where did he or she unplug it, where did it happen, um, you know, um, uh, uh, who was it, et cetera. Like you can do all of that type of information from our event report itself. And so that's generally what we have the event report for is more like ad hoc type information sourcing across the entire fleet. And so that's like part one of reporting. Part two is more of this concept of like can reports. So if you want to be able to gather and see information across the entire fleet for you know every single trip that was taken, you can easily do that. And when you when you pull it on one single day or across a month, you'll be able to see it by technician or across the entire fleet per trip. And we really define that by uh, ignition on, ignition off. So within this report itself, and this is probably one of the more consistently used ones, you can see if I want to track Alexa's truck, I can see all the trips that, that she took. I can see the starting location, uh, departing location, the arrival location, how long the trip took, how many miles they drove. And the other part that um, you know we get a lot of uh, feedback on is, 
is being able to track individual safety events. And again, every, you know, every, every business manages safety a little bit differently. And I think some areas of safety are more critical than others. And so one of the areas that is consistently brought up is, hey, I, I want to I wanna try and drive down speeding events. I want to try and drive down um, you know, how often hardcore braking events are happening because it's killing my fleet maintenance costs. So being able to track that within a single report and being able to see who may be the, uh, for lack of a term, the, you know, the, the more consistent offenders, mm-hmm. this is, this is, this, these are the type of tools that reporting has. And so this is more like canned static reports that you can pull across again, single technician or vehicle or across the entire fleet itself. So nice, nice. So something that's done either, you know, could be done daily, certainly is typically done weekly, but in any case, more of the, more, um, more of the consistent reports that we see. The other, um, the other area that's interesting is, and again, I, I realize some, um, I, I'm curious for, for your business, do you, do you manage your, your fleet maintenance in-house or do you use like a third party, you know, like enterprise type service to, to manage that? Um, I mean, kind of both like yeah we just kind of track it until like we work closely with the dealership um Ah. that's nearby like we do a lot of work for them and so um all of our trucks go there we purchase all of our vans through there so we have a pretty good relationship and um when they're due for service uh any issues arise with the trucks they go right to uh the dealership um right up the street so it it, it's pretty convenient awesome okay cool (laughs) excuse me yeah so you know, in, in my mind, Logan, there's like there, there, there's there's two main pieces of of vehicle um, like maintenance tracking. One is maintenance reminders. So, as you know, a, an admin, I need the ability to set up reminders when a truck needs an oil change, or the tires need to be rotated, or you know, I need to make sure that there's a walk around to check all the lights. Like all of these things are, uh, especially, I mean whether you're a fleet of two vehicles or whether you're a fleet of a hundred, like it can quickly become overwhelming if there's not a systematic way to receive a message or an alert when something is due. And so the, the, the point of maintenance reminders is being able to set and create a reminder for basically anything. And so within, within maintenance reminders and the vast majority of feedback we receive is um, you know, you're able to come in here and uh, select I'll just do, uh, you're able to select the actual reminder name. And so let's say we, we want to do like an oil change reminder. I'll mm-hmm. select the, the vehicle that's applicable. I can select um, uh, kind of a, a static uh, service type, whether it's an oil change or whether it's something custom. I can select that uh, service type. I can then select the type of interval that I want to be reminded. Like, do I oh, okay, cool. change I want to change oil every 3,000 miles, 5,000 miles, once a month, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you can absolutely set those in here and, and go about it that way. And so you create the reminder. It's, it'll, it'll send you an email right when it's uh, complete. And um, it's, it, it's all set up that way. So maintenance reminders, more of a fundamental piece to any fleet solution. But in any case, it absolutely is in here. And uh, most customers do have a lot of these set up. So... Um, the, the the last two pieces, like you know, just going through the product is <clears throat> is alerts. I would say this is probably the 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 most uh, set up portion for for Fleet Pro, or excuse me, most set up module that our customers use with Fleet Pro. And okay. simply, this enables you to create alerts for specific activity that you want to monitor. So, if you want to set up an alert, or the the owner wants to set up an alert to see every time a vehicle drives over 90 miles per hour, you can mm-hmm. set up an alert and you receive immediately an email um, that says, hey, Tyler was driving, he met the threshold, this is where it happened. And it's really up to the business to figure out you know, how you want to course correct. But yeah, whether, it's, sure. right, whether it's a speeding alert, whether it's a hard braking alert or harsh cornering, or if maybe the, maybe the business wants to monitor and say, hey, I want to be notified when my when my techs have been idling for more than 20 minutes because it's extremely expensive just to idle. So you can set yeah. up alerts for idling, like all of those more fundamental things. It's it's it's, it's very customizable and uh, something that I feel like is 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 used consistently. Do you do you guys 
if you were to say, or if you have a feeling on, you know, with your business, is there any of those areas where you feel like are more like hot button topics where, you know, the, the, the business wants to monitor more, or do you feel like it's not really, not really as critical for you? I don't know. I feel like it would be nice to be notified of those things. It's not something that I feel like we think about now because we don't have a fleet tracking um, program. Yeah, so yeah. it's just kind of we trust the technicians and yeah, that's as far as it gets. But it it, it this yeah this this looks nice. Like that that could be a cool understood. Yeah, way to like hold them said, accountable there's... too. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Understood. And you know, I think from a um. You know, from a setting standpoint, I mean, we've got we've got 20 different alerts you can set up, like whether it's okay. like you say breaking, cornering, idling, posted speed limit, stop time. Um, but also, I think there's a couple areas where it's it's also less about driver performance. And it's more about like the vehicle maintenance and where you can set up alerts every time, you know, like a, a check engine light comes on. So mm -hmm. the email comes through with the diagnostics of what is actually happening within the vehicle. You can set, set them up for, um, you know, things like whether it's a low battery or, or wh whatever it may be. So there's there, there's a lot of other benefits that go into it beyond just, you know, like ju just tracking what the tech is the tech may or may not be doing. So it's it's both technician performance as well as like driver perform or vehicle performance and how the vehicle may be performing or issues with how it's performing. So but certainly this is one of the more consistent ones that's um, that's thought about and actually set up. And then the other, th this one's this one's interesting. Um, this is talking about how how familiar are you are you with like geofencing and and how that works? Are you are you familiar? A little bit, I, kind of, yeah. It's it's like so w within. This is this is another interesting spot where, you know, we um, reason we we built ge geofencing and essentially what geofencing is with within Fleet Pro is, it enables someone to build a unique parameter around a location or a mm -hmm. geolocation or fence and be notified of any activity that crosses that actual geofence. And a lot okay. of the, a lot of like, let's just go through a quick example. If I, if I want to create a geofence, um, let's just say I want to, one of the more consistent examples is customers set these up for uh, monitoring activity within like supply houses. So whether it's Lowe's or Home Depot or Ferguson or any other local like part supplier, we yeah. get a lot of feedback that, you know, I, I see my technician there every single day and they're there every single day for like 30 minutes. What are they doing there? Like, why are they going on these breaks and doing these activities that may be, um, maybe it's, it's non-productive hours is really what it comes down to. And what are they doing there? And so what this does is you can really set up um, parameters to say, hey, Every time Tyler goes into a home, this specific Home Depot, send me an email. Let me know mm -hmm. what was happening, and we we let you know immediately. And so it's kind of a cool. Um, yeah, it is neat. It's a unique setup where we identify the location, we see the actual Home Depot itself. I can go in and create my boundary, and anytime the vehicle breaks this boundary then I'll receive an email immediately on that. And so okay. again, it's 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 more for monitoring anomalies. And we we've also, Logan, we've heard about it. Um, you know, the other consistent case is uh I'm not sure. Do you do you guys let your technicians take their vehicles home or do they bring them back to the shop every day? Yes, uh some of them do. Uh all the lead technicians take theirs home. Uh, Got it. Now the helpers that we have obviously don't, but yeah, the lead technicians take them. Understood. Yeah, the other, the other, um, I want to say consistent case. Other thing we've heard um, is that so, some shops do allow basically everyone to take their vehicle home, and yeah. they want to be able to monitor what may be happening on weekends. Like, if the vehicle mm -hmm. should only be used Monday through Friday for business purposes, it shouldn't leave the technician's boundary of their home. And so, True. being able to set up an alert for Saturday and Sunday and monitor. When the vehicle enters or exits that technician's home they can also be set up for like those types of use cases so again if there's issues within the business where that becomes you know maybe more important than other things like yeah. you know s s s some contractors have a have that problem some don't but in any case that's just another thing that we've uh, definitely heard people are typically using it for is it's not just you know monitoring um kind of the 
I'll say the bad stuff, but also you can use it to monitor when they enter a job location or when they get back to the shop at the end of the day, like what time do they actually complete their day? So there's, there's a lot of different use cases, but geofencing yeah. is really customizable. So cool. Um, and uh, the last thing I, I just wanted to cover and, and mention, I guess, really quick is, um, is more from a, uh, oops, I think this was, let me see if I can go into this one, this view here. Um, Okay. Um, within within cameras, um, it, you know, with, with you guys not really having a uh, an existing fleet solution today, it's um, something like you definitely don't have cameras as as well to any degree. But mm -hmm. you know, roughly, another interesting thing that we 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 see happening within the space is camera adoption itself. And I think Logan, it's I'd be curious on your perspective because you know, I, I'd say like five years ago, ten years ago, there used to be Cameras and vehicles used to be a little, little bit more taboo, where it was more like Big Brother watching, and um, you know, less about the safety aspects. And mm -hmm. we're definitely seeing the tide kind of turn here, where it's more like cameras are so sophisticated now, and you can customize the cameras. Where if you only want to monitor certain events, like cell phone use, but you're okay with them eating or drinking or you know, whatever else in the vehicle, you can customize the cameras to only send alerts during those those types of events. Um, mm -hmm. But also the, the critical part with cameras, I think, and just I'll round it out, then I'll, I'll pause, is, um, is cameras also are there for more detection of those unsafe things. So if as a business it is, you know, you don't want someone using their cell phone or, you know, driving consistently distracted or, not using their seatbelt, like the, the actual technology of these cameras is sending audible alerts to the technician in real time. So if, if it's detecting, hey, Tyler's on his cell phone, it's gonna immediately send an audible alert within the vehicle that's basically saying, hey, we're detecting you doing something unsafe. Like you should, you should let us back off of it. And, and it, it doesn't stop beeping until they actually stop that behavior itself. So the, okay. the level of customization and sophistication is, is certainly there way more than what it was five years ago, certainly 10 years ago. So yeah, um, sure. we're seeing a lot more adoption, but I'm, I'm just curious with, with what you know about, you know, the techs at, at your business, do you feel like, uh, do you feel like that's something that is, um, would be accepted or do you feel like it's just not something that the business is, is like, you know, I guess critical for the business. Yeah, I mean, possibly. Is it similar to a dash cam as well? Like, do people use it as that too, or is it kind of like a both like detecting, uh, detecting all the driving? Also? Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, it, it, it's detecting both forward facing road and driver facing. Um, okay. And it's uh, it's connected to the GPS device itself, and so all you know when it's detecting one of those unsafe behaviors eating, drinking, smoking, like looking at this example here, um, you can see that, you know, the technician's got a cell phone in his hand and it's able to detect it at that level. And once that happens, immediately it sends it back to Fleet Pro and flags it as a, a cell phone use. And so you see where the, the date, the time, the technician, the actual event that was, uh, that was captured by the camera. And um, you know, same thing with no seatbelt. Like it's, it's able to detect pretty on a pretty accurate basis, what, what may be happening, you know, within that fleet itself. Um, but I, I think that, I guess, sorry, last thing I'll mention is, I think the, the, the thing that some people may forget is we're all, like these cameras and detecting that stuff and the audible alert within the vehicle is, is done for more than just, you know, tracking what the technician did throughout their day. It's done to try and prevent an actual accident. Like the, I mean, the, the amount of things that I see with detecting cell phone use and it beeping at the technician and the technician swerving and like avoiding an accident. Like th this one here was, was interesting where um, this car is like pulls out in front of this technician with one of our cameras and it, it alerts him in the vehicle. And so he immediately swerves and avoids it. So it's, it's way less about, you know, having, constantly monitoring a tech and it's absolutely more about like preventing something from actually happening itself and so like those types of things is what we're seeing the, the market generally turn towards and it's why we you know eventually want to offer it within our within our portfolio itself so 
Mm -hmm. And these are not, you know, cameras are not required. You, someone can just get basic GPS if, you know, they, if they don't want this um, at the beginning, but in any case, like I said, it's, we're seeing a lot more adoption and um, a lot more folks thinking about more of like the preventative side versus just like monitoring what that tech is doing all day. So, yeah. Um, well, cool. Like I said, I, um, I just, I, I want to give you a brief, a, a brief overview of kind of what, what we offer, what we have. Um, and what we're working on um, in a non-sales way. I, is there any questions that, that you may have or, or um, anything else I can you know, really answer on, on your side? Yeah, the GPS devices now, do they come with your subscription Fleet Pro or are they purchased separate? How does that all work? Is it easy to install them in the, in the truck? Yeah, so we do have, um, so it is sold basically as a monthly as a monthly service. So if someone was to, like in your case, if you were interested, um, mm -hmm. I'd have our, our our team reach out because we are doing some um, some uh, free month promos. Mm -hmm. um, so we we do have um, you you can you, you buy the GPS device. Say you wanted to put it on five vehicles of the of the ten or so. You can you can buy five, and that monthly it's just a monthly subscription for each each vehicle. So mm -hmm. um, so that, that's how we go about it. You don't have to buy the hardware separate or anything like that. It's just, it rolls into the monthly the monthly subscription. Okay, gotcha. So you pay a monthly price kind of per van. Yeah. And that includes includes the GPS device slash. Yep, yep, exactly. That that includes okay. that includes everything that we were talking about from the vehicle data, the driver data, all the reporting, the maintenance setup, the alerts, the groups, mm -hmm. the geofences. It includes all of that stuff. Um, and then the, the cameras are, you know, are there a separate additional yeah. cost, but generally the, the basic like fundamental GPS tracking is, is all bundled within that. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, so that's that's where we're at. Um, like I said, I, uh, I'll, I, I'm happy to send over a little bit more literature on your side as you're able to peruse through things um, yeah. when you're able to, and, uh, and we'll go from there. But in any case, I, I hope this was somewhat helpful to just kind of see what we have, what we're working on, um, kind of where we're going and, you know, what we, what, what we're, what we're looking at so far. And can the GPS devices be installed in any like year van or is, or is it, yeah, specific to. Yeah. So we have, um, anything, any, any vehicle manufactured after, uh, 1995, we can support with our basic, um, device. Uh, okay. we do have adapters for things like, I don't know if you had like a, a Freightliner or a Mack truck or anything else. So we do have adapters for older vehicles, but basically anything after 1995 will, it's just a, it's just a plug and play device. So you, the, the, the best part of that is like the onboarding pieces, you get the device, we ship it within two to three days, it arrives, you take the device, you plug it into the OBD port and it starts registering with our cellular networks. Um, and then we have our onboarding session uh, where you um, can actually, you know, attend that to learn a little bit more, a little bit more um, intimate details about how things work and how to set up, and mm -hmm. pretty much you're good to go. So I mean, truly, it, it, it's more, it, it's a plug and play, but um, that's that's really how the how the actual devices work itself. Okay, nice, cool. Nice. That sounds pretty simple. Awesome. Well, like I said, Logan, I, I, I appreciate you hopping on. I uh, appreciate your engagement. Um, mm -hmm. Good chatting with you. I'll send over a little bit more information um, and yeah. if you're able to pop through it, please do. And um, uh, always feel free to reach out anytime and we'll go from there. Okay. Awesome. Thank cool. you. I appreciate All right. it. Thank you, Logan. Appreciate you. Yep. All, right. All right. Bye. bye.